Going into this, there is something I want to establish. I'm just old enough to recall Toonami, but still too young to have experienced Gundam Wing when it aired in the West. The prep work for this video was the first time I had ever seen it. There's no nostalgia for this series. Something that is rather interesting with Wing, though, is how its reputation over the past few years has... changed. The common consensus seems to be it hasn't aged well. That, in hindsight, what was once considered amazing is actually kinda bad. Or, at the very least, mediocre. Honestly, I don't think it's the series itself that changed. In fact, I believe it's aged really well, all things considered. But rather, its former audience. They picked up on flaws apparent to teens and adults, but a bit more subtle to kids. Wing's story is a good one. There's a lot of interesting ideas and moments, but its storytelling is lacking, at times nearly non-existent. To use more technical terms, shall we say, Wing feels like a script where someone confused the treatment, the outline, for the first draft. We have bullet points that explain what happens and why. The audience knows what's going on, but something is missing. The journey, the how for a character's change, has been glanced over. There's little build-up to the big moments which define them, shape how they are going forward. Therefore, it doesn't hit nearly as hard as it could have. Usually, this would be the point where I pick out a few specifics of what I'm talking about and go more into detail. The issue, however, is it's rather difficult to do so. This isn't due to a lack of examples, but rather an overabundance. Nearly every facet of Wing's story has something missing. This is the series' core issue, so what I say for one example will generally apply to nearly everything else. I don't want to sound like I'm dogging on it, because what I perceive as a flaw has actually left me more fascinated than disappointed. The only real exception to this, however, would be Operation Meteor and the Gundam pilots themselves. Though this is the inciting incident which starts our story, the motives of our heroes, these two facets of Wing feel not just underdeveloped, but outright incomplete. I never quite understood why the five engineers didn't coordinate their efforts, have their respective pilots work as a team, or, at the very least, know about each other. I can kinda gather why, but without a proper explanation, it just makes the five come off as genuinely dumb. If Operation Meteor was a grand coincidence, I could understand the confusion. Be a bit contrived, but eh, hey, it works. However, it appears to be implied that each engineer knew what day to begin the operation, and about each other. Again, it's just a mess, and it's one I hear gets addressed in a side material manga, which is nice. Out of everything I'm about to talk about, this is my one genuine gripe. The motives of each respective pilot are also rather difficult to discern, at least in the beginning. I can gather why Troa, Duo, and Quachair, I probably screw that name up, choose to fight as the series progresses. However, Wu Fei and Hiro are a different story. Put bluntly, Wu Fei just seems confused. I get that he's supposed to more or less be a mini Trays, someone who aspires to be the romantic ideal of a warrior. This is fine, underdeveloped, but fine. I may wish that more time was dedicated to exploring this idea, but again, this applies to nearly everything present in Wing. What I take more of an issue with is how unclearly this mindset ties into being a part of Operation Meteor. There's a vague connection, a righteous warrior fighting for a righteous cause, but it's shaky. Any cause can be perceived as righteous, so long as it's spun in the right way, something we see quite often in the Universal Century. So, what makes Operation Meteor stick out for Wu Fei? Unlike the others, he seems less concerned about the colonies. That protecting them isn't his inherent reason to fight. Having a clearer understanding of Wu Fei's motive would have been nice, and done his character a lot of good. Hiro, on the other hand, isn't confusing in the slightest. But, someone the audience should have far more context for. There's quite a bit going on with this character, which feels like the payoff to something we never saw set up. The kid abandoned his name and wants to die. There has to be a reason for that. One which I'd imagine ties directly into him becoming a Gundam pilot. Though it's a massive meme, 
Hiro constantly threatening to kill people and doing precisely the opposite is very deliberate. There's something to it. I've seen incompetent writing in Gundam before, Kigali is crying and whatnot, and this isn't that. The fact episode 1 opens with Hiro threatening to kill Relina and ripping up her invite, only for the series to end on the inverse shows there's something more going on. Same holds true for Hiro's desire to live come the final battle. If the audience understood why Hiro was the way he was, what led him down the path he walked, I suspect these moments would have hit extremely hard. Instead of merely being entertaining or badass, they'd resonate in a manner similar to the Axis shock. They'd have a lot of emotion put behind them. Though that all sounded a bit more negative than I intended, I hope you can all see where my fascinated interest for Wing stems from. I know what the series is trying for, it's right up my alley, however, something is missing which holds it back. For Wu Fei, we don't quite understand why he's doing what he's doing, which makes his scenes often come off as… confused. For Hiro, we're lacking the setup for powerful payoffs which don't land nearly as hard as they could. In their own right, these characters aren't bad, their story arcs are entertaining enough but they're just shy of greatness because something is… missing. Wu Fei, again, is a good example of this mostly on account of his relationship with Trey's, an antagonist who is legitimately interesting when present. Both of them believe in the romantic ideal of being a soldier, a warrior. Trey's is so fervent in this regard that he abandons the very revolution he started and stands against it once it starts to employ mobile dolls drones in place of soldiers. He believes doing such a thing tarnishes the horrific spirit of war, that there is far less tragedy in conflict when the lives of soldiers aren't lost, tragedy which is desperately needed to help dissuade future fighting. The loss of life is a deterrent. Without it, ordinary people, civilians, are due to suffer far more than they had in the past. Like a lot of other characters, Trey's hates war and instigates the conflict which follows the Gundam's arrival. His goal is to create a tragedy so horrific that it terrifies mankind into pacifism, but it ends up backfiring following the emergence of mobile dolls. He has the heart of a soldier, he loves to fight and test himself against a worthy opponent, but war? War is something he's grown to detest. There are several contradictions in his line of thinking, something Wing takes care to point out, which makes him the perfect foil for Wu Fei. For all intents and purposes, the pair are the same with one key difference. Trey's understands how out of hand his ideals can get. Wu Fei does not. This right here, this central conflict between two fundamentally similar characters is something which an entire series could be built around and yet it is just one of many underlying ideas present in Wing, which I believe is to its detriment. The final duel between Trey's and Wu Fei on paper is exactly the sort of thing I love. We have a man who's come to a battlefield prepared to die, whose ideals are almost exactly the same as a protagonist, but with the understanding it's destructive. After being denied the death he longed for, Trey's chooses to fight Wu Fei where he's killed, much to his opponent's horror. Failing to terrify mankind into pacifism, he settles to sacrifice his life in a bid to save Wu Fei's, to stop a boy he respects from making the same mistakes as him. Again, on paper I love this, but there's a problem with its execution. There isn't nearly enough buildup for this final showdown. The idea is paid lip service to, as opposed to explored proper. It doesn't have room to breathe, to develop because Wing is trying to do this for nearly every character and plot point. This brings me back to what I said at the start of the video. This series feels more like an outline as opposed to a completed draft. I understand what I should be feeling while watching the duel between Trey's and Wu Fei. The show established that, but it didn't build up to it. Instead of feeling like a story which slowly ramps up, with each idea feeding into the next, it feels like it's jumping from one place to another. This issue extends past the characters and story both, to impact Wing's action as a whole. Unfortunately, battles never hooked me. 
be it duels or mass engagement, because of a fundamental lack of buildup. At least, most of the time. Constant use of stock footage aside, without establishing or having a real grasp on the narrative stakes of what you're watching, fights in Gundam tend to fall flat. If the action isn't incredibly well done, where that alone is the draw, there needs to be something more going on. This isn't to say it has to always focus on character drama, not by a long shot, but a sense of tension still needs to be established. The battles of Odessa, Jaburo, Solomon, and Abawaku in Mobile Suit Gundam are a great example of this. Though Amuro and the crew of the White Base don't change all that much going forward, what lays before them is unlike anything they've encountered. The series then establishes a sense of anxiety by slowing down its action. It allows tension to build, the moment to breathe, as the ship presses towards the inevitable. The battles have build-up, making them satisfying as hell once they kick off. Wing has a tendency to skip this. In comparison to nearly every other series, the conflict in Wing isn't all that large. I get it. Apparently the war only has had like 99,000 casualties, which is pretty tame, all things considered. However, if the series slowed down just in general, I suspect everything would have landed far harder than it had, be it shakeups in the plot, giant battles, or duels between characters. Actually, that might be a lie, since the show does exactly that every now and again, only to drag at points. Whether or not the show needed more time to explore its ideas, or simply needed to make better use of what it had, is anyone's guess. All in all though, for as much as it may sound like I'm ragging on Wing, I really enjoyed my time with it. The music is great, the dub a genuine masterpiece of cheese that's just bad enough to be really charming, and the characters that stuck out really stuck out. Duo has a lot of personality and I had a great time whenever he was on screen. Zex might be the best Char clone I've encountered, even if him becoming the main antagonist toward the end felt a bit ham-fisted. Again, there just wasn't quite enough setup to really sell it. Though, for a while there, he felt like what a post-Zeta Char would have been like if Ayug still went up in smoke, but he himself didn't lose his mind. Also, I think Wing may, in fact, have Gundam's overall best girl. No, it isn't Melina, or eyebrows, but Noin. She's like the perfect mixture of Fa, Emma, and Haman, which I didn't know I needed in my life. Bit of a shame she didn't have a ton to do toward the end, but hey. Before wrapping this up though, there is something I want to address. That being the After Colony era as a setting. It has aged incredibly well. So much so, it's actually a bit worrying. The ideas pertaining to the military industrial complex, drone warfare, the merits and pitfalls of globalism, as well as how bloody confusing the politics of war can get, are things incredibly relevant today. I'd wager more so now than in the 90s. In this case, I think it's less Gundam predicting the future, and rather those involved with the production looking at trends of the day, only to take them to a logical conclusion. At least, one that fits for the story they're trying to tell. You can see echoes of how things currently are in the modern day in Wink's setting, just cranked up to 11. I think it's a pretty neat aspect of the show, and something you should keep in mind if you're revisiting the series, or checking it out for the first time. It doesn't get political. Well, it does, but not in the way you may think. We'll say I do appreciate how the setting is intentionally meant to be a confusing mess. Much like today, wars aren't necessarily fought by two or more clearly defined opposing sides. Sometimes it's an interconnected web of bizarre backroom dealings and really hard to understand politics. Other times it's organizations as opposed to nations. It's something we've kinda seen in Gundam before, but I feel like Wing really pulls it off the best. The series felt distinctly different in this particular regard than a lot of others even if I'm still on the fence as to whether or not they pulled off this idea as well as they could have. Basically, I'm forced to ask, what is the line between intentionally confusing your audience and them just actually being confused? Lost. 
One thing the After Colony era does poorly though, is something you can only really recognize once you've reached the end of the show. Nearly every main villain, Trey's, Zex, Dorothy, they all want to bring about an end to war via a conflict so awful it terrifies the populace into pacifism, make them want to prevent such an ordeal from happening again, that sort of thing. This is something I actually like. For each character involved, it makes some sort of ironic sense. However, such a drastic measure seems incredibly premature for the setting. If people were dying by the billions, with constant horrific warfare, then I'd buy it. However, the After Colony era doesn't seem that dark or desperate. Again, there were only 99,000 casualties throughout the series. Essentially, I could see this happening in UC, just not wing setting as it stands. If things were more horrific, then that would be a different story. Just a minor gripe in all honesty, but I thought it warranted a mention. Lastly, I want to touch on the mobile suit design just really quick, because I could not find a place to do so previously. With the exception of maybe heavy arms and the wings, I really do not like the designs of the Gundams. They're not my thing, I think they're ugly. However, having said that, I utterly adore what is done with the grunts and how an older model clearly leads to a newer one. You can see how the MS developed from the Tall Geese to the Leo, then the Leo to the Taurus and the experimental prototypes, and finally the Virgo. Excluding the Tall Geese, I may not like how the grunts look, but I love their attention to detail. I can easily see how one led to the other, and it's something I always appreciate. So, keeping everything I've said in mind, if Wing had one real issue, it is the sense of something... missing. The series was ambitious, had a lot it wanted to do, but just couldn't pull it off. The actual story is interesting with a lot of great moments, however, said moments fall flat on account of the journey between them, the build-up, being nearly non-existent. The series needed more time in the oven, a once-over, to fully flesh out its ideas to make it not just entertaining, but something genuinely special. But with that said, I've been Bufar1 and one Tell me what you thought in the comments down below. Um, I do want to state that up next on the docket is Endless Waltz. Wing as a setting has fascinated me, and I want to see more of it. And I've also heard some interesting things about Endless Waltz. That should be up uh, in a few days. I know I'm probably going to watch it immediately after recording this video, but that's also assuming life doesn't keep kicking me in the nads like it has for the past few weeks. Sorry there haven't been regular videos, it's been a genuinely bad time. And I appreciate all of your guys' patience. Uh, one final note of housekeeping, there is a link to a Patreon that I have. Don't feel obligated, it's there because people have asked. Uh, but more importantly, there is a link to my Discord. Gundam fans, there's a lot of Gundam fans on there. If you like a chill place to hang out and discuss, I, uh, I think it's a good fit. So yeah, uh, once more, I've been Boo. I'll see all you next time. Tell me what you thought. Goodbye.